Hello everyone, my name is Vic and for today I'm going to share with you uh, the um, the Q payment network and behind initiative Q and also Q's versus crypto. So these are the frequently asked questions on um, these topics, okay? So let's start. So the Q payment networks are what this, what advantages does the Q payment network offer? So over the last few decades, many advances in payment systems have been devised, but they have not been made available. Since they are only available once they are widely adopted, a chicken and egg problem. Initiative Q's distribution incentives solve the adoption problem, thereby offering one global network that integrates many of these breakthroughs such as low transaction costs, a streamlined digital process with better fraud protection means fewer costs, a universal currency in one global system, one address for all financial needs, cutting-edge measures to ensure secure transactions, fingerprint, voice and face recognition, multi-factor authentication, and advanced artificial intelligence models. Simplicity and user-friendliness one-click payments, no need to carry cash or cards, customer protection, using material regulations and buyer feedback to prevent sellers from misrepresenting their products and pricing, reversibility and efficient dispute resolution, easy online claims process to ensure user confidence, optimal credit allocation, using richer information and more advanced models to correctly assign credit to lenders. Parental control, sub-accounts that allow parents to control children's expenses. Helping the unbanked, connecting the world economy, the billions who don't have access to financial services. Okay. So why will Initiative Q succeed where others haven't? Since payment systems involve a network of buyers and sellers, a new technology only brings value once it is widely adopted. Buyers first want to see many sellers offering it and vice versa. There have been many great payment technologies developed over the years, but they failed to gain universal acceptance. Due to this barrier, Initiative Q's innovation is in leveraging the future value of Q itself to incentivize its widespread adoption. Our unique reward system encourages users to become early adopters and opens the door to adoption of major breakthroughs and in the payment industry. So what can I do with my reward queues? So once the system is functional, the queues reserved for you will be released gradually and you will then be able to use them for any kind of payment or exchange, purchases, sales, rentals, investments, and etc. When will I be able to use my reward queues? Okay. So the reward queues reserved for you will be released gradually, distributing all the queues at the same time when flood the market and devalue the currency. Therefore, once the system goes live and begins to grow, only a set or proportion of one's reserved queues will be available for spending. The rate at which queues are released will be regulated to maintain a stable exchange rate of around 1 queue per 1 US dollar, while also incentivizing economic growth. Queues may be granted sooner to members in some locations to accelerate the creation of local queue-based economies. Economic models show that if initiative queue succeeds and the queue payment network becomes a leading payment method, then eventually all of the queues reserved for members will be released while still maintaining this one-to-one -one exchange with um, US dollars. So are my tra queue transactions private? Can anyone see them? Initiative Q is designed to succeed as a mainstream payment network, which fully, which means fully complying with all laws and regulations. Transaction information on the Q payment network will be handled similarly to how current payment and banking networks operate, wherein the bank maintains all transaction records, but must safeguard the data and cannot share it with outside parties unless required to do so by law. So how much is one Q worth in USD at this stage? Qs are only being reserved and cannot be used. If Initiative Q 
becomes a leading payment network queues are expected to be worth appro approximately one US dollar per queue. Um, this estimate is detailed in their um, our economic model. So what is your estimate of the queue value based on? Okay, so the reasoning behind the estimated value a future, I mean future value of the queue payment network can be summarized as follows. The payment world is stuck with decades old technologies since it is very difficult to get buyers to adopt a new technology that sellers don't yet support and vice versa. Initiative queue solves this problem by compensating early adopters with future currency. This enables the building of a payment network that is far superior to current ones. A payment network that is both superior technologically and widely adopted would be preferred by both buyers and sellers. It is realistic to expect that such a network would eventually overtake credit cards, which account for 20 trillion in annual transactions. The total amount of money in the world is roughly half of the world's annual economic activity. The value of all Q currency could thus reach half of the Q's annual volume. An alternative data point is the value of cryptocurrencies which peaked at nearly $1 trillion despite hardly being used for real payments or nearly all activity is speculation. Therefore, the total future value of queues could reach a few trillion dollars. Since there are currently 2 trillion queues, the goal of 1 US dollar per queue is achievable. So what happens if not enough people sign up? So Initiative Q need, needs many committed users to ensure a meaningful network of buyers and sellers. If critical mass is not reached, the project may not go forward because the rewards are only valuable once the system is functional. It is in everyone's interest to get others to join. So that is the Q payment network. So let's go to the uh, next, which is uh, behind Initiative Q. So who is behind Initiative Q? Initiative Q was founded by Sar Wilf, a serial entrepreneur who started the first payments startup in 1997, sorry, and later founded Fraud Sciences, which redefined the payment security space and was acquired by PayPal in 2008. The Initiative Q team comprises top experts in payment systems, macroeconomics, and internet technologies. The idea behind Initiative Q is the first is to first create a critical mass of users which can be harnessed to create the world's best payment network. Therefore, currently our primary focus is to get millions of Q members registered, after which we will recruit the world's top professionals, professionals in the space. So what is the Monetary Committee? A global currency should not be controlled by one private company. Therefore, an independent monetary committee will be appointed via voting by all members and stakeholders in the Q payment network. The committee will only issue new coins for the purpose of maintaining stability and increasing adoption, similar to how the world's largest currencies are managed. The alternative, having a fixed supply of queues like Bitcoin or the similar, similarly a simplistic monetary policy will not work in the real world. Stability of purchasing power is crucial to success and it can only happen through intelligent analysis of economic activity and customer behavior. Who are the Q agents? The Initiative Q will focus on the technology, standards and regulations of the payment system while delegating the financial operation to hundreds of local agents. These local agents will be responsible for customer service, safeguarding members' funds, Connecting local stores, legal compliance, and settling with other agents. Agents compete with each other um, to manage member accounts, buyers, or sellers, and receive a small fee of transactions they process. Together, they enable the Q payment network to be truly uh, to be a truly global system with local branches providing individualized support and access. So, how many queues are there? Who holds them? So, there are two trillion queues. Um, 2 trillion queues will be used to be distributed as follows. 80% are expected to be distributed as incentive to encourage user activity and promote network growth. Around half of the incentives are reserved for buyers and, and re the rest for sellers, agents, contributors, and incentivize growth supporting activities within the queue network. So 10% are assigned to the initiative queue payment company for the purpose of funding development of the world's most advanced payment network. 10% are assigned to the Q Monetary Committee uh, monetary reserves. These will be gradually converted to other currencies and financial assets, allowing any Q member to easily convert the other currencies if needed. 
Monetary Committee members will be compensated according to the industry standards. Once the initial 2 trillion queues are fully distributed, the Monetary Committee may create and distribute new queues in order to keep the money supply in line and, I mean, with economic activity and to maintain stability as outlined in the economic model. So now that this concept is out, what prevents a hundred new initiative queue like networks from popping up? Okay, so for a new payment network to succeed, it must reach wide-scale adoption. Buyers should see many sellers supporting this payment option and sellers should see many end up buyers requesting it. If the market fragments into many networks, this is much less likely to happen and everyone loses. The comp competing networks, the buyers and the sellers, it is therefore a high priority for initiative queue to deter copycats, at least during the initial growth phase. This includes number one, exclusivity incentives. Initiative queue will provide incentives for sellers who commit to using the queue payment network exclusively legal. Core components of the initiative queue model are patent pending, trade secrets. Initiative queue has several tools to accelerate growth, which will be rolled out in the future to keep the competitive advantage. These will be exposed only when necessary. Rapid growth, most importantly, the faster the queue payment network grows, the harder it will be for the new for a newcomer to catch up. Here you can help get more of your friends on board and increase both the rewards and li the likelihood of the queue payment network success. To be a clear to be clear, while a unified network is hard for success, competition is important to drive progress and innovation. The queue payment network is therefore designed as an open network of independent operators who, who compete on connecting buyers and sellers to the network. Okay, so queues versus crypto. So how is this different from Bitcoin and cryptocurrency? So crypto is a brilliant solution, or cryptocurrency rather is a brilliant solution to a problem that doesn't exist. Cryptocurrency is a digital money that is hard to counterfeit. While the mathematical foundation is ingenious, an immutable money ledger is far from being a major need today. Our money is already digital in the form of, of bank computer records. And no one is worried with um, that these records will suddenly disappear. This is due to the robust system of trust and governance that protects the individuals from such risks. While many dislike this complex system, it works reasonably well, and there is no, there is still no better alternative. In fact, the anti-counterfeiting measures that cryptocurrencies offer create an array of much worse problems. So number one. Transferring security risk to the, secure, uh, to the currency owners, removing banks from the system also removes the protection that banks provide in security, fraud prevention, and dispute resolution, leaving individuals vulnerable to theft, scams, and human errors. Okay, to protect themselves, cryptocurrency users are expected to undertake complicated security procedures such as generating cryptographic keys using dice, entering them into an unused laptop that is later destroyed, storing the keys, Using special hardware from the from multiple manufacturers and keeping paper backups in bank safes. So comparing that to credit cards, which allow consumers to make payments using just a few encrypted numbers, while being fully protected from losses, underlies how far cryptocurrencies are from becoming the currency of the future. So so unstable value. So a basic requirement of a currency is stability and predictability in purchasing power. This requires a carefully managed monetary policy that matches the money supply to current economic activity. Cryptocurrencies have either no monetary policy or an overly simplistic one. As a result, their value fluctuates rapidly, rendering them unhelpful for purchases and trade, with all activity driven instead by speculation. So legal controls. Whether we like it or not, governments still hold ultimate power and they insist on regulating currency transfers, financial transactions, investments, and their underlying mechanisms. Any currency that attempts to circumvent such regulations, including most cryptocurrencies, will face an uphill battle to wide-scale adoption. So, reversibility. No matter how good a system is, if humans are involved, there will be mistakes and misunderstandings. Okay, Allowing transactions to be reversed benefits both buyers and sellers in the long term as customers can engage in the market more confidently. Of course, reversing a transaction should be allowed only for certain reasons. 
something that can only be determined by human, human beings following procedures. This goes against the decentralized nature of cryptocurrencies, making wide-scale adoption difficult. Number five, uh, waste. So Bitcoin's energy consumption is equivalent to that of 6 million households that emits 90 million kilograms of carbon dioxide or 20 um, million pounds or 200 million pounds every day. Worse all, that energy is spent to support just two transactions per second, a far cry from the two th from the thousands of transactions per second on the credit card network. So Initiative Q's main goal is to achieve global adoption and the Initiative Q therefore prioritizes ease of use, stability, security, efficiency, and legality over abstract goals like decentralization. This is a real-world solution for real-world problems. It is based on a net network of Q agents who employ thousands of people, conform the local regulations, and ensure that members receive quality customer service and are fully protected from theft and scams, without requiring them to become security experts. However, some of the concepts behind cryptocurrency are valuable and may be deployed in Initiative Q's back end for settlement between Q agents where these and disadvantages become negligible or negligible rather. So is this an ICO? No. ICO or initial coin offering is a term used in the cryptocurrency world to describe the public sale of newly issued coins. Initiative Q's goal is to become the standard in payments and to create a global currency. That requires adoption by hundreds of millions of members which will not happen if they are required to pay. pay. Qs will therefore be distributed for free. So how is this different from an airdrop? So airdrop is a term used in the crypto world to describe free distribution coins. While Initiative Q will distribute free currency, the, that by itself is not enough to revolutionize payments. It is it can only succeed in synergy with two other fact actions rather. So number one, requiring members to undertake simple tasks to qualify for the rewards. These are these are tasks that promote wide-scale adoption for Q for the benefit of all members. Right? So number two, development of a state-of-the-art payment system. The eventual success of Q is based on it being the safest and easiest, cheapest way to trade. The free distribution of coins is only interesting in so much as it prom promotes the adoption of advanced payment technologies. So additionally, Initiative Q is not a cryptocurrency which allows you to avoid the many shortcomings of cryptocurrencies, right? So those are the facts about the Q payment network behind Initiative Q and Qs versus crypto, right? So guys, I think that's it. Um, see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.